Hello, this is Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. The Minister for the Public Service addresses concerns on the implementation of the Border Control Unit. A global school health survey is set to begin here next week. Kuwait's newly appointed ambassador to St. Lucia discusses tangible gains with the Governor General, His Excellency Neville Snack, and helping St. Lucians understand Alzheimer's. Minister for Public Service Senator the Honorable Dr. Eubolus Raymond has addressed concerns on the implementation of the Border Control Unit. Highlighting the importance of the Customs and Excise Department, he clarified government's intentions for the unit during this week's Cabinet press briefing. He revealed that Cabinet had appointed a steering committee and an implementation team to oversee the process. However, some unexpected issues developed. The consultation that was done by the implementation team was not a comprehensive one. And we found out that the most important department was not consulted, and that was the customs department. And personally, I believe it's a flaw in the consultation process, because if you are dealing with a border control which consists mainly of customs officers. And for the consultation to um, not have included the customs departments, anything coming out of this consultation, to me, it is very weak and very flawed. And I understand very well the concerns of the customs officers. But I want to make clear, very clear, that the government will not statutorize the new border control. It will not be a statutory cooperation where customs officers will reapply for positions as being said out there in the media, on social media especially. I want to make it very, very clear because government understands the importance of customs departments. Customs provides 55% of recurrent revenues for government, the central government. We are talking about in the region of over $500 million. So that clearly cannot be and will not be the policy of government to put the border control as a stat statutory organization. So I wanted to make it to assure that the customs officers that the whole talk about their reapplying for positions and stuff like that, this will not happen with this government. It's my understanding also that the, the consultation was not, had not even included the steering committee. Again, another major flaw of that consultation process. So I want to make clear again that the government is, or the the consultation will continue, and in due time, when we come out, the government um, decides to, to make a formal, um, a formal rep uh, presentation to the public as far as where we are going with the border control. But for in the meantime, even before this report is completed, I want to make it clear that the model of statutorization is not the thinking of government. And having discussions with the customs officers, they are not in support of such a cooperation. The ambassador of Kuwait to St. Lucia presented his credentials to Governor General, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, on September 6. In his presentation, His Excellency Ambassador Mohammed Fadel Khalif stated that Kuwait and St. Lucia, after being occupied by the British, share many common values. So we share a lot of uh, values with uh, your country. Kuwait uh, was a, a, a British protectorate, and my, I remember my, uh, my, my father and my grandfather, my ancestors, they were at that time British subjects. The Governor-General also vividly recalled the invasion of Kuwait during his stint as the Minister for Foreign Affairs. 
during your country's worst nightmare, as Minister for Foreign Affairs, and in support of the intervention, I stressed in the United Nations General Assembly that the evacuation of the intruder be by any means. Perhaps one of the strongest statements made. So in receiving your credentials, Ambassador, I feel good for St. Lucia and I were there with you. The Governor General praised the enfranchisement of women in Kuwait, while Ambassador Khalif expressed his intention to work to attain tangible results during his stint as Ambassador. The Department of Health and Wellness, in collaboration with the World Health Organization, the Pan American Health Organization, and the Center for Disease Control, will be conducting the Global School Health Survey from Monday, September 10, 2018, and this will continue until Friday, September 21, 2018. The survey is implemented globally using the same data collection questionnaire. This allows for comparison of the data generated by all the participating countries. This survey looks at all the aspects of the health of students aged 13 to 17 in the secondary schools. It is done every five years and this survey is done in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. The survey questionnaire will be administered during one regular class period in randomly selected classes from Form 1 to Form 5 of all secondary schools in St. Lucia as well as the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. We want to be able to collaborate with the parents so that we actually have permission to conduct this survey with their, their students, their children. We're asking you to give them permission so that they could actually take part in the survey, which is very useful because the information we gather from the survey, we will use to improve the health of the students. The survey explores protective as well as behavioral risk factors, which affect the overall health of the student population. Meanwhile, a cohort of persons was trained to deliver and implement the PAHO Stanford University Chronic Disease Self-Management Program throughout different communities on the island. More in this report from Miguel Morissette. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to train persons in chronic disease self-management. On Sunday, September 2, 2018, a graduation ceremony was held for 30 home health workers from the Castries East constituency. The Chronic Disease Self-Management Program is a six-week course that trains individuals to best manage themselves and others who have chronic disease such as diabetes, hypertension, cancers, asthma, and other heart conditions. In attendance was Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, who congratulated the graduates on their accomplishments. I want to say that you have gained valuable experience, even in dealing with your personal daily lives. You have learned a lot, and, and that is commendable. So congratulations to a job well done. I know what some of you went through to be where you are here today. And even when you started and you thought, what is this six weeks training program, it's so long and everything. And look at everybody here looking so, so happy and so contented and satisfied that they put their best foot forward and they have accomplished something so worthwhile to our society, to our community, to the entire country, and especially for the clients that need you so very much. Senator the Honorable Fortuna Bellrose who also attended the graduation ceremony, reminded the home help workers of their important responsibility. You have been entrusted with the care of our vulnerable citizens, most of whom have made their contribution to society. They have murdered our children, they have fathered our children, they have worked and contributed to this economy, and for various reasons, they need our help, they need your help. And so no matter how poor, how frail, how indigent they appear now. You each must treat those clients with respect and afford them courtesy, dignity, and, care, and the care that you would want for yourself when you get to that age and when you get to that point. Because we will get there one day. We want a standard of care in cash disease so that when we send one care carer, even if she's not there, the replacement may be even better. That's what we want in cancer disease. So we need to have that passion. We need to feel it 
so that when we deliver, we can deliver with the class and standard that people will want to, to have us back. The journey continues as the Ministry of Health and Wellness continues its thirst at reducing and controlling chronic disease, thus creating a healthier nation. The graduation ceremony was held at the Enshipo Community Center. From the Communications Unit in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Miguel Morissette reporting. This is Nation Beat. After the break, the OECS Commission renews its relationship with the Debara Combined School and the SLTA to host the 7th Annual St. Lucia UK Tourism Showcase. What happened there, Pinky? Hey, man, I did taking a little nap there last night. I don't sleep, Gaston. Uh, my dog, me also. Mosquitoes, mosquitoes. Now I come for a little nap under the tree. Me and Gwen come my plea to you. I have a racket. I hit in them endless mosquitoes. What is the Ministry of Health doing? The Ministry of Health. Nah, nah, nah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Imagine last night I caught a rat. Nah, Look, nah, I have it there for him to, to me, burn. Listen to me. Yeah, Pinky, the government cannot do everything. Look at your surroundings. You have breeding grounds for mosquitoes and rats. The mosquitoes can give you Zika, chicken gurnia, dengue, yellow fever. The rats can give you leptospirosis. And why are you sitting so close to that rat? You know the rats can give you leptospirosis. So come with me. Let's go and look at your surroundings and see what we can do to make a difference and make a change. All right, well, let's go. You see that? You yeah, have to do something about that. You have a home for the rats. You have food for the rats. Hey, you have hey. coconut husk with oh, water in it. That's that. breeding ground for mosquitoes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We have to do something about that. Let's hey. clean that up. Okay. All right. Nice try. Pinky, what the drum cover doing there? That should be sealed on the drum correctly. Ah, I forgot that. Mo That's how mosquitoes sir. can breed, you know. Okay. Pinky, how are you? Need to play your part, you know. All right. I'll try. Pinky, come. Let me show you that. You seen that? That's my garbage bin there. That's where I put in all my garbage. But you cannot have it open like that. That's where the rats can go and eat. Okay, I you, didn't know you that. You cannot have that. And you're saying it's the government? You have to take accountability of your own action. Keep it sealed. Okay, all right. Okay, mock up one. Look at this tire. That's a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. We have to get rid of that water. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Stop, stop, stop. What do we do with that now? Let's put it under the house. Okay. After we have removed all the water, we can put it in a place where it won't collect water, okay? Okay, so all right. Let's put it under the house, all right? Okay, all right. So okay. it's safe under there. Okay, so when it is there, it will not collect water to breed mosquitoes. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, okay, boom. I'm going to buy All right, very good. So you see, Pinky, these are some of the changes you can make. Be that change. Pest must go. Merci, merci, Jamal. Merci, and share with you, my dear. All right. This message was brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. For further information, contact the Environmental Health Department at 468-3700 or 468-3706. Be the change. Pest must go. Welcome back. More than 150 travel trade partners in the United Kingdom will take part in a week-long series of events and meetings scheduled for the 2018 St. Lucia UK Tourism Showcase. The event will culminate with the St. Lucia Gala Awards, which recognizes the contributions of the travel trade partners to St. Lucia's tourism industry. More from Anicia Antoine. St. Lucia, recently listed by Virtuoso as a premier destination of travel agents, will be hosting its seventh annual will showcase in the UK from September 10th to the 15th of 2018. The showcase allows for business personnel from a variety of agencies such as UK tour operators, travel agents, airlines and media to meet with the local hotels and tourism partners in St. Lucia to create more exposure and make the island's tourism industry more resilient. 
They just touch everyone in the market to make them understand that St. Lucia um, is very grateful for everything that they do with us and that we intend to strengthen that business going forward. And essentially this is our opportunity to celebrate all of our partners in the UK, um, to thank them for all of the things that they do for St. Lucia, for all of the business they send to us, and really to just do a lot of things with our partners while we're there. Because of the way the UK market is structured, it's quite different from the US and that's the one that you saw at Harbour Club. Um, it's better for us to get into the market, to actually touch the market. We don't touch the UK market as often. Um, while we do have a, a wonderful team there, um, because the US is closer, obviously it's easier to travel there in terms of our executive team. So for our executive team, this is an opportunity for everyone to get out there, to see and touch everyone in the UK, um, to be able to meet with the media, to talk to the journalists one-on-one, -on -one, something that we get to do um, once or twice a year. So this is very important for us to get to them and to see them in their own market. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority delegation will include Tiffany Howard, Chief Marketing Officer of the SLHTA, and Darren Sami, St. Lucian cricketer, who will be accompanying the Minister for Tourism, Honorable Dominic Fede. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority successfully hosted the North American Showcase in July. It was um, a very, very encouraging year for us in that we saw the island recording uh, its best year in tourism arrival numbers. Uh, I think that the Air and Seaports Authority suggests that we had some 386,000 passengers for the first time in the history of tourism in our country. This partnership is critical to our economic and social development because the tourism satellite accounts suggest that every single dollar that is spent in our country, about 65 cents come from tourism. The United Kingdom is one of St. Lucia's main source markets. In 2017, St. Lucia received a record of 1.1 million visitor arrivals, recording the highest growth of all Caribbean tourism organization members. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. In preparation for the new school year, a delegation from the OECS Commission visited the Debara Combined School in Babono to deliver school supplies and backpacks donated through staff contributions. The Debara School, the organization's adopted school, was selected because of its remote location and the recommendations from staff to support this community. The principal welcomed the gesture by the OECS Commission. We know that not many of, not all of our parents are able to provide our students with the necessities. And so we are extremely grateful at the UCS and its staff. They've chosen this, um, the Debara Primary School to provide this token. Such initiatives don't come all the time. And so when it does happen, there is a, an immense feeling of gratitude that we have. And we just want to say thank you. Our students would say thank you. And our parents, I'm sure they're immensely gracious for your tokens of, of friendship. St. Lucian artist Taj Wicks has made a donation of 500 bicycles, half of which has been received by the government of St. Lucia. Wicks, who is based in the United States, has been on a campaign to improve the overall health of his countrymen. Through his foundation, the Often Cry Outreach Toko, Wicks has over the years worked directly with the St. Lucia Diabetic and Hypertensive Association. We have more from Anisia Antoine. As of 2017, the International Diabetes Federation recorded 14,200 cases of diabetes in adults in St. Lucia. In an effort to decrease the high rate of diabetes, the They Often Cry Outreach Toko Foundation, co-founded by Taj Weeks, has donated 500 bicycles to the people of St. Lucia. The handing over was held at the office of the Prime Minister. I was told that there was 1.5 bikes to every person in Switzerland, so there were millions of bikes. And people were leaving the bikes by the side of the road. So I asked if I could get those bikes. We were able to arrange something, and here we are with 500 bikes. On behalf of Toko and the government of St. Lucia, I am really happy we were able to bring this here. Because you know, we, we, you know our situation with diabetes. We started a documentary about four years ago um, on diabetes. And from the time we started to the time to this day, nothing really has changed. Uh, the sedentary lifestyle is one of the main reasons why we are in the situation we're in. Of the 500 bicycles which were shipped from Switzerland, 250 will be given to the government of St. Lucia for distribution and the remainder will be given to the Diabetic and Hypertension Association to develop creative ways to make a healthy lifestyle more attractive. 
Newly elected president of the St. Lucia Diabetic and Hypertension Association, Andrew Felix, expressed his gratitude towards the Toko Foundation and the government. He stated that it is incumbent on citizens to preserve their lives. With the donation of those bikes, not only will it go a long way in alleviating our health problems that we face, as Taj indicated, we are afflicted with several sedentary lifestyle diseases, mainly diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. And I think if we can get our people active, if we can get our people moving again, we would have gone a long way in alleviating that problem. The significance of doing so for us as a government is manifold in the sense that not only will our people be healthier, we'll be cutting down our health bill, because those diseases that have been mentioned are not just in isolation. Associated with those diseases are several complications like organ failures that lead to dialysis, expensive treatment, amputations, and these have further implications that can affect family life. The bicycles donated ranged from adult bikes to children push bikes. The Minister for Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment urges drivers to be more careful and considerate on the roads with the expected increase in cyclists. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. September is World Alzheimer's Month. Worldwide, an estimated 35 million people and their families are affected by dementia. To help raise awareness, the St. Lucia Alzheimer's and Dementia Association will be holding activities around the island. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia that causes problems with memory, thinking and behavior. Symptoms usually develop slowly and get worse over time, becoming severe even to interfere with daily tasks. Many are mistaken in thinking that Alzheimer's is a normal part of aging. However, this is far from the truth. Associations were, were collectively um, trying to bring the awareness about the, the disease. And so though uh, Alzheimer's Disease International was trying to support other associations and they came together to um, bring awareness. And what they did was did um, interesting things in the month which was like light, um, a whole building, purple, mm -hmm. and things like that, just to bring the awareness. And they were trying to find ways to collectively, globally bring awareness because mm -hmm. they knew at that time there was probably um, 35 million people at that time mm -hmm. who were, who were um, affected by the disease. Throughout the month, the association will be holding memory cafes, information and memory clinics, with one to be held at the JQ Mall Grosile this coming Saturday. Angels of the West Indies um, has a lot of information on the website. Mm -hmm. um, you just Google angelsofthewestindies.com. Um, the phone number is 485, 486-4509. Mm -hmm. And we're more than happy to send you information. Um, the website has some, and then it'll also link to the association. We're in the process of developing the one for the association specifically. Okay. But on Facebook, there's a a group, the St. Lucia Alzheimer's, and so there's a list of information on there. There's lo lots of files, the warning signs, and all of that. With purple being the internationally recognized color which represents the disease, the association has asked the public to wear something purple to work every Friday throughout the month of September in support of those suffering, their families, and the need for further research. And that's Nation Beat. Join us next time as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. I am Janelle Norville.